Do you love art like this, but maybe don't want to spend money like this? Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lindsay. I'm an interior stylist and teacher here to help you create a home you truly love. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my favorite secret for creating handmade art pieces using the amazing little dynamo machine, the Cricut Joy. Today's video is sponsored by Cricut. I'm so excited to be working with this company. They make some incredible cutting machines that do amazing things. I'm going to be using this to create handmade paper art right over here. This project is so fun, simple, and easy. I'm going to share step by step how you can create a piece of art just like this for your home. And I'll show you how I restyled our mantle for fall using the art that I created. Let's get right into it. Step one is really just making time and space to make. It might seem that I have it all figured out over here, that I just pop on YouTube with a smile on my face, but I've got to tell you, starting the school year this year has been more stressful and busy than ever before. So it was really nice to have an excuse this weekend to clear off my dining table, pull out all of these fun ideas and materials, and get to making. Once you've got your workspace set up, now it's time to gather materials. First, I found this picture frame at Target. It's a natural wood tone with a white mat for just $20 or $18, depending on the size you're looking for. This is a great cost-effective option in the neutral color family that I was looking for. Next, the background for my art project is going to be canvas. And rather than buying a canvas or buying it in a roll, I found this very convenient canvas pad from Mondo Llama at Target. One side of the canvas is white gesso ready to paint. The other side is the natural canvas which we're going to be using for this project. Of course, my new prize possession, my Cricut Joy, it has a plug-in and you're also going to need a desktop computer or laptop to run the software from the website. A couple things you'll definitely need to do this project, the standard grip mat. This particular one helps hold the cardstock in place while you are putting it through the machine. Then this simple set of tools will pretty much get you through any project. This is the weeding tool helps you pull out all those little pieces. This is another spade tool that helps you pull up. And then this tool helps you smooth down vinyl for different vinyl projects, which I'll probably share in an upcoming video. Next, you'll want some cardstock. I love the Cricut cardstock. They have it in a lot of different colors. I love the neutral sort of recycled paper color for this project. It'll be a great contrast against that sort of lighter tone of the canvas. Next, you're gonna want spray adhesive. I personally love anything from tacky glue. Today's video is sponsored by Cricut. Although I've used Cricut before to make some projects for school, today is my first time using the Cricut Joy and my first time using it to create something special for our home. Here it is, the Cricut Joy. This is the cutest little machine. You can make personalized art projects, labels, pretty much anything, coffee mugs, and even gifts. Cricut Joy is the perfect companion to quickly and easily personalize anything with one cut and one color in 15 minutes or less. It's fun, functional, and simple to use. Practical projects and beautiful art pieces have never been so simple to create. It's so small, you can take it anywhere. I'm a teacher by day, and I can easily toss the Cricut Joy in my backpack, take it to school, work on projects there, bring it right back home to work on things here in our house. It is beyond easy to use. Setup takes less than 15 minutes, and you're already cutting and creating projects with your first use. With Cricut Design Space on desktop, you can create your own projects. You can look through all of the library of different materials created by Cricut and other users. Cricut Joy is also pretty amazing. It can cut through a myriad of different materials, even thin faux leather. Because of its design, Cricut Joy uses Cricut Smart Materials, which are different from other vinyl and paper. These materials are designed to work without a cutting mat. Cricut Joy is the smallest cutting machine ever made, and you can use it for so many different projects. I'm planning to use it to create labels for our pantry project coming up in a future video. I have so many different ideas of things that I want to create for our home using the Cricut Joy and all of the great materials they sent along. And there's also a bunch of tools that help make the process super fun and easy. Now it's time to get into this project by choosing a design. I like to scroll through Cricut Design Space to gather ideas. You can try a free trial of Design Space where you can search through every single design that's been uploaded, beautiful things that we can just download, cut, and get using. And today I was looking for something intricate and interesting 
kind of like a lace detailing. Once inside Cricut Design Space, I created a new project. Then I clicked on images and within the search panel, I typed pattern. From here, I scrolled and I could find a lot of interesting and simple patterns, a lot of which would make fantastic art pieces using this method. I kept scrolling until I found something that kind of just struck my fancy and hit the right tone that I was looking for. Something a little bit organic, a little bit pattern, a little bit ornate, something that might look handmade in inside of a glass frame. Once I found this image, I clicked on it and clicked add to canvas. From there, I could resize it by dragging these corners and then I was able to exactly match it with where it will be on the cardstock I'm going to run through the Cricut Joy. Just so I could see it a little better, I recolored this to black. I'm choosing to use the standard grip mat for this particular project. I find it works great for Cricut cardstock. One last bout of resizing, just making sure this is exactly right and I'm ready to get started with cutting. Now it's time to prep materials and get ready to cut using the Cricut Joy. First, I use my Fiskars little paper trimmer to cut the paper cardstock exactly the right size to fit here on my Cricut Joy standard grip mat. Place it on the Cricut Joy, get ready to click make. It gives you a preview and asks if you're using a mat, which I am, so I'll select that. It always gives you a little preview so you can make sure you have sized your design correctly for your project. I just leave the settings to default, but if you have a thicker or thinner material, you can use more or less pressure. And when I'm ready, I click go. The whole process takes under, gosh, five minutes. And depending on the level of detail in your project, you'll have this done in a flash and ready to start the weeding process. The Cricut Design Space app will let you know when the machine is done cutting. I must admit, it is so much fun to watch it go through the machine, watching that little blade cut out every single tiny detail in this lace pattern is so cool. And I'm so glad I don't have to cut this myself. When everything's all set, I'm ready to watch this machine get to work cutting out this detailed design. Oh my gosh, it's cutting it out. This is so exciting. It's so easy too. You just sit back and watch it become something gorgeous. This turned out so beautifully. The level of detail in this design is so amazing. I'm always impressed by how this machine can cut out such intricate designs with such ease. Cutting is just about complete. The screen says 100%. Push the unload button. Now we can take a look. Wow, a lot of great detail on this. And in a few minutes, we are ready to move to the next part of our project. So now it's just keeping track of each little piece and gently pulling it up with the weeding tool. This can get a little on the tedious side. I'm not gonna lie about that, but I find that just putting on some good music, having a good cup of coffee or maybe tea, maybe a podcast or a TV show, maybe something you've seen that you don't have to pay too close attention to can make this process actually quite relaxing and enjoyable. Obviously, the simpler the pattern that you go for, the less weeding you'll have to do. And starting with something a little bit simple might help if you're at all worried about this. I'm just gonna go sort of section by section here. Slow and steady definitely wins the race on weeding. Occasionally you'll have a piece like this that just doesn't want to come out properly, but again, that's why this weeding tool is so helpful because you can just very gently pry up that section and look, no harm done. Right, the weeding I think is officially done. Just doing one last check to make sure you didn't forget any pieces where this tool is gonna come in handy to help pull this very gently off of the cutting mat. The weeding tool can also help with this. I picked an extremely elaborate pattern, so this one might take a couple minutes. Liberated. 
<laughs> so now you can see the full effect here. I'm just gonna tear out a piece. So I've got my nine by 12 piece of canvas and my beautiful little masterpiece. And you can see that I'm going for this sort of very simple handmade paper design look. I have a crazy idea and I'm going to try it. I want this to look a little bit more like handmade paper, but I don't want to destroy the beauty of this design. So I'm thinking of very gently crumpling the paper to give it a little bit more texture. Wish me luck. I really want every little piece to have that sort of handmade vibe. It's okay if it breaks, I think, because we're just gonna kind of glue it in place. Very gently pull it apart. Oh wow, now it's very textured. It's also got sort of a 3D type of a quality to it. This is obviously an optional step if this makes you nervous. <laughs> It's a little bit more 3D now. Now that I've seen the project from Cricut, tried my experiment of crumpling this paper, I am so excited to see it mounted on the canvas backing. So I'm gonna take this out to our back deck where I'm gonna put on some gloves, of course, to protect that manicure from spray adhesive. I love to use Tacky Spray from Malines. I find it works on pretty much every project from Christmas ornaments to art projects like this one. Spray the back with a fair medium coat of tacky spray and then I immediately flip it over and secure it in place on the canvas. It doesn't take very long for this to dry and I'm already inside placing it within the white mat from our picture frame. I can't wait to see this come together especially with that canvas backing and that natural wood frame. It's just going to bring it all together. What's also really nice about white matting is you can perfectly center your art piece even if you didn't perfectly measure it. I'm a little impatient sometimes so I just kind of throw it together. I think that's going to be the perfect placement for this. I like to use painter's tape to secure my art into the mat. All right, ready to put in the picture frame. Always clean the glass with my favorite glass cleaner. This one's from Sprayway. I'll link it down below. And there we have it. Here it is, the finished product. I'm so excited about how this turned out. It's so simple, textural, and has that sort of handmade feeling that the inspiration pieces were giving me. I'm gonna style this as part of our new fall mantle. So let me show you how I put it all together. I am so excited to see this new piece of art in action, and I think it's time to retire this beautiful seascape by Charlie Palmer to a more non-dominant area of the home. Thinking about fall styling now and thinking forward to Christmas decorating, you know I'm already thinking about that. And I just think adding a mirror here is going to open up a lot more possibilities for the holidays in general. Splash is a little bit more light to this side of the room. I'm layering in a peace lily in a cement planter, one of our favorite plants, and it does very well here. And then I've also got this sort of spooky layered drawing over photography. It's overexposed in a wooden frame that I sourced on Pioneer Square downtown Seattle years ago. And then of course our handmade art thanks to Cricut Joy. I'm so happy with how this turned out. I love that sort of layered texture as I constantly talk about on this channel. The canvas was perfect. A maple glazed donut candle sets the atmosphere along with a little Halloween themed black and white orange in that book there and I don't know it just feels perfect simple neutral and great for fall I am so happy with how our little new fall styling turned out. Very simple, neutral, and I love the texture that my new little handmade art piece gives this space. I hope you're feeling all the fall vibes, getting inspired to try something new in your space and create some art of your own. I'll link all the products that I used in the description box down below, along with a bunch more of my favorite different materials that you can use for different projects, like writable labels, permanent vinyl, and even a heat press, which I plan to use for an upcoming project. Next week, I'll be sharing the Den Makeover. I'm so excited to share this one with you. It's definitely in this sort of neutral vibe and has a lot of the same feelings as this art piece. Until then, you might enjoy my fall front porch makeover. I'll link that for you right here. I also recently reviewed Nate Burkus and Jeremiah Brent's New York City townhome. I'll link that video for you down here. I find it wildly inspiring and I'll see you 
in the next video. Bye, my friends.